Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in the law shanty a lot quicker than I thought we were going to be back in the law shanty because it's a season of miracles and we've had a miracle. And the miracle is the EOC actually issued some guidance on vaccinations. Um, and they did that in their What You Should Know About COVID-19 and the ADA blah, blah, blah guidance. And they've added a new section, Section K, called Vaccinations in that new section, like the rest of the guidances in question and answer format. And they give us nine questions. That's nine, not nine, nine, nine. See, I can count. Nine questions and nine sort of answers on COVID-19 and mandatory vaccination requirements. Now, why do I say sort of answers? Because in a couple of situations here, that are kind of important. The EEOC spent too much time this weekend watching the Lions play and they thought it was fourth and 20 and they punted. Um, but not everywhere. A couple of places we got some pretty straight up answers. So let's go through the questions and the answers real quick and see if we can get you some answers for your questions on vaccines that we haven't been able to answer up to this point. But I think you're gonna find when we're done with this that the stuff we've been telling you so far, we did a pretty good job guessing. And the EOC didn't really go out on any limbs here with respect to um, a mandatory vaccination policy. But And here's what the bottom line is. The bottom line is, is that you're going to be able to, at least as far as the EOC is concerned, have a mandatory vaccination requirement for people to come to work. But as we've told you all along, as I've told you before, and as John told you when he was talking to Santa Claus, there's going to be exceptions to that rule that you're going to have to make. <clears throat> Okay, question number one. Is the vaccine a medical examination under the ADA? And this question is framed in terms of if the employer gives the vaccine themselves, which I suppose you're only going to do if you're a doctor or a hospital or something like that. Or if you contract with someone to give the vaccine to your employees. So you go to the clinic and you say, I want all my employees to be vaccinated. They're all going to come to you and the clinic does it, and the clinic works for your employer. So is giving the vaccine by the employer or by somebody who contracts with the employer a medical examination for purposes of the ADA? And the EEOC says no. And I'm not going to get into details, but they say no. The vaccine itself is not a medical examination. But the EEOC does note that in order to give a vaccine, the CDC recommends that healthcare providers ask a bunch of screening questions to determine whether it's safe for an employee to take the vaccine. And those screening questions are a medical inquiry, a disability-related inquiry, as the EEOC puts it. So there's some rules associated with that. That's a nice little segue into question number two that the EEOC asks. Are the screening questions subject to the ADA standards for disability-related inquiries. And here, the EOC says, yes, pre-vaccination medical screening questions are likely to elicit information about a disability. Therefore, they are disability-related inquiries under the ADA. Therefore, for current employees, you have to meet the job-related and consistent with business necessity standard. And to meet this standard, you have to have a reasonable belief based on objective evidence that an employee who does not answer the questions and therefore does not receive a vaccination will pose a direct threat to the health or safety of him or herself or others in the workplace. We'll talk about direct threat in a minute. But the EOC also says this, there's two exceptions to this rule. Number one, if the vaccine is voluntary, not mandatory, you may take a vaccine, you're not required to take a vaccine, I don't need to meet the job-related and consistent with business necessity standard as an employer. Or number two, if I say to the employee, you have to get a vaccine, but I'm not giving it to you, and I'm not going to contract with anybody to give it to you, go to your own health care provider and get the vaccine because your health care provider doesn't work for me as the employer. That's an exception. That would seem to be a push on the part of the EEOC to make sure that employers are not doing this. They're not rushing out to contract with vendors to give this vaccine. They're instead saying to their employees, go to the hospital, go to the clinic, go to your healthcare provider, get it done, which segues into the third question. Nice little segues in this guidance by the EEOC. 
is asking or requiring an employee to show proof of receipt of a COVID vaccine, a disability related inquiry. And the EEOC says pretty straightforward, no. So if I have a mandatory vaccine policy and I say to all of my employees, employees, you must go get a vaccine and provide me proof that you got it. That's not a disability related inquiry and I can do that, all right? I don't need to meet the job related and consistent with business necessity standard. Now, the EEOC does say you might want to warn your employees. All they got to do is provide you proof, no other medical information, and then you avoid implicating the ADA altogether. This question is about emergency use authorizations from the FDA, and you guys don't care about that, and neither do I. The next question, K5, is where some of the rubber meets the road. Okay, here it is. If an employer requires vaccinations when they are readily available, how should it respond to an employee who indicates that he or she is unable to receive a COVID-19 vaccination because of a disability? Here's where we go, right? All right, so here's where some of the answers come. We also get some puns here. The EOC does say this, the ADA allows an employer to have a qualification standard that includes a requirement that an individual shall not pose a direct threat to the health or safety of individuals in the workplace. <laughs> However, a safety-based qualification standard, such as a vaccination requirement, that screens out or tends to screen out an individual with a disability, the employer has to show that an unvaccinated employee would pose a direct threat due to a significant risk of substantial harm to the health or safety of the individual or others that cannot be eliminated or reduced by reasonable accommodation. And they cite to a rec. Does that help you? That means this, no flat across the board rule, don't get vaccinated, you're fired. Can't have that, right? That's what the EOC is saying here. Like we've been saying all along, there's going to be exceptions to these rules. And here's where the EOC gets a little punty, if you will. You've got to conduct an individualized assessment of every single person who says, I can't get the vaccine because I've got a disability. Now, that also means you can get medical evidence from that employee proving they can't get the vaccine. But you've got to use a four-factor test to determine whether direct threat exists. This comes from the ADA generally. Number one, the duration of the risk. Number two, the nature and severity of the potential harm. Number three, the likelihood that the potential harm will occur, and number four, the eminence of the potential harm. <clears throat> the EOC then says this, quote, a conclusion that there is a direct threat would include a determination that an unvaccinated individual will expose others to the virus at the work site. If an employer determines that an individual who cannot be vaccinated due to disability poses a direct threat at the work site, the employer cannot exclude the employee from the workplace cannot exclude the employee from the workplace or take any other action unless there is no way to provide a reasonable accommodation absent undue hardship that would eliminate or reduce this risk. All right. So that's what that means. That means we're going through the normal ADA interactive process. All right. Then the EEOC says this, if there's a direct threat that cannot be reduced to an acceptable level, the employer can exclude the employee from physically entering the workplace. But the EEOC then goes on and says this, but this does not mean that the employer may automatically terminate the worker. Employers will need to determine other rights under EEO laws or other authorities, state, local, federal. For example, if an employer excludes an employee based on an inability to accommodate, a request to be exempt from the vaccination requirement. The employee may be entitled to accommodations such as performing the current position remotely. This is the same step that employers take when physically excluding employees from a work site due to a current COVID-19 diagnosis or symptoms. Some workers may be entitled to telework or take leave or do other things. We told you this was gonna happen at the beginning of this. We said it in about 15 different webinars. We said it in e-alerts. Because of this working from home thing, our days of saying nobody can work remotely are over. And the EOC is basically confirming that right now. In other words, you have to consider telework as a reasonable accommodation for somebody who can't get vaccinated because they have a disability. All right? <clears throat> 
They also say you need to make sure your supervisors and managers know how to recognize a request for an accommodation, that they shouldn't just ignore it, and you're not going to get off the hook if they do. And they say that you get to rely on CDC recommendations when deciding whether an accommodation would be effective and it wouldn't pose an undue hardship. Um, and then the EOC does recognize that there may be situations when an accommodation is impossible. We'll talk about that in a minute. They also remind you, you can't disclose this to anybody. It's private, confidential information. Okay, that gets us to K6. If an employer requires vaccinations when they are readily available, how should it respond to an employee who indicates that they can't take the vaccine because of a sincerely held religious belief? This is our other big exception that we've talked about all along. Um, the EOC says, look, once you're on notice, you have to accommodate unless doing so would pose an undue hardship. They do remind us here that the undue hardship standard under Title VII is different than it is under the ADA. It's a de minimis standard. Um, and they, they point us to guidance. Now, they, the EOC says here that because the definition of religion is so broad and it protects lots of beliefs and practices and observances which you might not be familiar with, you should ordinarily just assume that an employee's request for a, a religious accommodation is based on a sincerely held religious belief. Did you just hear that? You should assume. Now, that's not the end of it here, though, because the EEOC does say, however... If an employee requests a religious accommodation and an employer has an objective basis for questioning either the religious nature of the request or the sincerity of the belief, you would be justified in requesting additional information. John told you this the last time we were together when he was on with Santa. Okay? And then we get to case seven. And I'm going to read this whole thing verbatim because this is the heart of it, right? What happens if an employer cannot exempt or provide a reasonable accommodation to an employee who cannot comply with a mandatory vaccine policy because of a disability or sincerely held religious practice or belief? That's the question. Here's the answer. <clears throat> if an employee cannot get vaccinated for COVID-19 because of a disability or sincerely held religious belief, practice, or observance, and there is no reasonable accommodation possible, then it would be lawful for the employer to exclude the employee from the workplace, period. This does not mean the employer may automatically terminate the worker. Employers will need to determine if any other rights apply under the EEO laws or other federal, state, and local authorities, period, end quote, hike, hike, punt. So we're going to have to make individualized determinations on each of these situations. Now, there's two more questions, and they both revolve around GINA. For those of you that don't know, GINA is the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. The first question is, is giving the vaccine, does it implicate GINA? In other words, giving the shot or requiring the shot or requiring proof of the shot. The answer to that is no, it doesn't implicate GINA. But the EOC also says asking the pre-vaccine questions does or may implicate Gina, so you got to warn the employee. Again, I think the EOC is pushing you here to send people to their own doctors, their own hospitals, their own clinics to get these vaccines and just requiring proof and not doing it yourself or contracting to have it done yourself. So that's something to keep in mind. Thanks very much for indulging us again. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, give us a ring, shoot us an email. We're happy to hear them all and thank all of you for the emails I have been getting. It's very nice of you. Um, I appreciate it very much. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.